ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு பிட் ஆஃப் அனாட்டமி ஸோ இந்த லாஸ்ட் டுட்டோரியல்ஸ் ஆஃப் எம்ப்ரியாலஜி வி சா த சேஞ்சஸ் தட் அக்கர்ஸ் ட்யூரிங் த ப்ராசஸ் ஆஃப் எம் இம்ப்ளான்டேஷன் ஸோ நவ் வி வில் சி வாட் ஆர் த சேஞ்சஸ் தட் அக்கர்ஸ் இன் த எம்ப்ரியோ பிளாஸ்ட் லேயர் ஸோ டில் நவ் இஃப் யூ அப்ரிஷியேட் த ஃபீச்சர்ஸ் ஆஃப் த எம்ப்ரியோ ஸோ வி சா தட் இட் கண்டெயின்ஸ் எ லேயர் ஆஃப் அவுட்டர் லேயர் ஆஃப் செல்ஸ் which is called as the tropoblast and there will be an inner layer of cells which is known as the embryoblast so in this class we will see so what are the changes that occurs in the embryoblast layer so this is nothing but the blastocyst with an embryoblast the tropoblast and the blastocele so before proceeding to the changes that occur, to see the changes that occurs in the embryoblast we will briefly see what are the changes that occur in the tropoblast layer so the tropoblast layer initially it contains a single layer of cells gradually it differentiates into two layers one layer which shows clear cell membrane and this layer it is called as the cytotropoblast so it is called as cytotropoblast cyto refers to the cell so each cell will clearly visible whereas around the cytotropoblast there will be formation of another layer derived from the tropoblast itself so here what happens there will be division of the cell at such a faster rate that only the nucleus will divide and the cytoplasm or the cell membrane will not divide because of this in this outer layer which is much more thicker than the cytotropoblast we will see just a mass of cytoplasm and this mass of cytoplasm it is studded with numerous nuclei so because of this since it contains only the cytoplasm and cytoplasmic mass and numerous nuclei so this layer it is called as syncytiotropoblast so these are the two different layers of the tropoblast the cytotropoblast in the inner aspect syncytiotropoblast in the outer aspect so there will be numerous changes that occurs in the syncytiotropoblast and cytotropoblast and they are destined to form the placenta so for the development of tropoblast we will not include in this we will see in the uh, formation of placenta or development of the placenta so in this class we will see what are the changes that are occurring within the embryo blast layer so in the initial phases the embryo blast is just a single layer sorry just a group of cells that are present towards the polar tropoblast or the embryonic pore of the tropoblast so they are completely undifferentiated or the stem cells which undergo first level of differentiation to form two layers of cells so there will be so we will not worry about the remaining layers of the tropoblast here so there will be differentiation of the cells as i already said and with this differentiation there is formation of two layers of cells so cells in the upper part that is towards the mural tropo sorry towards the polar tropoblast it forms columnar shaped cell and there will be formation of a basement membrane and in the lower part there will be presence of cuboidal cells so instead of mass of cells here we are seeing differentiation into an upper layer of columnar cells and a lower layer of cuboidal cells so this upper layer of cells which is columnar in nature it forms what is called as the epiblast layer ap means above so it is the cells that are present in the upper part of the embryoblast or it is also called as primary ectoderm whereas the lower cuboidal cells it is called as 
since it is present below it is known as the hypoblast or also called as primary endoderm so gradually there will be appearance of a small space in between the epiblast layer and also the tropoblast layer so that small space will gradually increase in size So this will be the cytotropoblast layer. So gradually the space will increase here. And that space it is lined by a layer of flat cells which is said to be derived from the cytotropoblast layer. And this layer it is called as amnion membrane or amniotic membrane and this space that is formed here it is called as amniotic cavity so amniotic cavity it is bounded on one side by the epiblast and it is bounded on the other side from the amniotic membrane which is again derived from the cytotropoblast at the same time there is formation of one more membrane towards the hypoblast layer. So this membrane that is formed here, some say it is derived from the tropoblast or cytotropoblast whereas some say it is derived from the endoderm or the prim primitive endoderm layer itself. So this membrane it is called as Husner's membrane sorry Husserl's membrane and this cavity that is formed here it is called as yolk sac. So what you should remember is yolk sac is the cavity related to the hypoblast or the primitive endoderm. Amniotic cavity is the cavity related to the epiblast or primitive ectoderm. So these are the changes that occurs in the second week in the embryoblast. So what major changes has occurred? Instead of group of cells, now we have got two layers of cells. Instead of a single cavity, now we have got two cavities, the amniotic cavity and also the yolk sac. And this appearance, so how it appears if you see here now, so you can see two layer of cells. So that means it is bilaminar in nature. So bilaminar, bi means two, lamina means layers. So what this two layers will do, it helps in the formation of the embryo. So that's why it is called as bilaminar germ. So because it gives rise to various layers of the developing embryo and it appears like a disc. So that's why it is called as bilaminar germ disc. So these are the initial changes that occurs in second week in the embryoblast. So if you see the further changes. So here if you appreciate the amniotic membrane, the Husserl's membrane, all of them, they are in close association with the cytotropoblast. So there will be secretion of one more layer of cells or one more layer of connective tissue from the cytotropoblast and some say even from the amniotic and the Husserl's membrane, which will start to creep in between the cytotropoblast and the Husserl's membrane and also the amniotic membrane. So with the formation of that, so what changes occurs if we appreciate, so we will draw the cytotropoblast here for better understanding. So this cytotropoblast, it will start secreting a substance which separates it from the developing embryo. And inside this there will be presence of amniotic cavity and presence of yolk sac. 
So we will not worry about the ectoderm and endoderm uh, layers. <laughs> so this layer that is secreted from the cytotropoblast and which is present outside the embryo. So if you see the composition of this, it contains mainly the connective tissue or the mesenchymal tissue. That's why it is called as mesoderm layer. Since it is present outside the embryo, it is called as extra embryonic mesoderm. Remember this extra embryonic mesoderm, it will not contribute to any part of our body. So it will contribute in the development of the umbilical cord and also development of the placenta. So within this extra embryonic mesoderm, gradually small cavities will appear. So these small cavities that appears within the extra embryonic mesoderm, it is the nothing but the coelomic cavity or the extra embryonic coelomic cavities. So all these small spaces, it will finally unite with each other to form a single extra embryonic coelom. So with the formation of the extra embryonic coelom, so what will be the picture of entire embryo means, so there will be presence of cytotropoblast and in the inner aspect there is amniotic cavity and also the yolk sac and there will be formation of a cavity or the union of all these spaces will lead to formation of the coelomic cavity which is called as extra embryonic coelom. So now if you appreciate where this mesoderm is present, so some part of the mesoderm is present outside this extra embryonic coelom, whereas some part of the mesoderm is present inside the extra embryonic coelom. And both this, they will continue in caudal part of the embryo. So as we saw, the extra embryonic coelom is divided, sorry, the mesoderm is divided into two parts by the formation of extra embryonic coelom. So one part is in the inner aspect and the other part is on the outer aspect. So this, so the entire extra embryonic mesoderm now is divided into two parts. So one part that lines the amnion and also the part which lies in the entire cytotropoblast. So this is called as somatopluric layer. Whereas a small part which is present in relation to the yolk sac, so it is called as splanchnopluric layer. So a single layer of extra embryonic mesoderm now has got two parts, the somatopluric which is related to the amnion and also to the cytotropoblast and the splanchnopluric which is related to the yolk sac. And this part where it is continuous, where somatopluric and splanchnopluric layers are continuous, so this region it is called as connecting stock. So this connecting stock, as you can see, there is a small extension of yolk sac into the connecting stock and that extension it is called as allantois. So this connecting stock, it will in future, it forms the umbilical cord which connects the developing fetus cell to the placenta. So these are the changes that occurs in the outer aspect, formation of the extra embryonic mesoderm, appearance of small spaces which will coalesce or which will unite to form a single extra embryonic coelom which divide the mesoderm into two layers, an inner layer called as the, sorry, the layer covering the primary yolk sac called as the splanchnopluric layer and the remaining part of the mesoderm is called as somatopluric layer and connecting stock is the part where both this somato and splanchnopluric layer are continuous with each other where a small extension of yolk sac can be seen which is called as the allantois. So at this time, so this yolk sac initially we call it as, the yolk sac initially we call it as primary yolk sac. So some amount of primary yolk sac is lost in the mesoderm 
and the remaining yolk sac we call it as definitive yolk sac. So these are the changes that occurs in the extra embryonic mesoderm. In the second week itself, there will be some changes that occurs within the embryoblast. If you see only this layer, what changes occurs there. Now we are seeing oh, just the layer of bilaminar germ disc. So, which contains an epiblast layer and an hypoblast layer or primitive ectoderm and primitive endoderm. So, first sign of differentiation occurs in the cranial end of the endoderm layer where the cuboidal cells that are present here, they gradually becomes columnar in nature. So, the other the parts remain same. So, the epiblast layer remains same. There are no changes in this as of now. So whereas in the hypoblast layer, some of the cells that are present in the cranial end, it becomes columnar in nature. And at this region where the cells have become columnar, so it binds firmly with the cells of the epiblast. That means there is no separation between the epiblast and hypoblast layer at this region. So this region it is called as the pre or procordal plate. So this is one more change that occurs in the second week of development in the embryoblast. So these are the major changes in the second week of development. So if I brief it again, so there will be changes occurring in the tropoblast which I have not described in detail for now. So major changes is instead of a single layer, it becomes bilayered, an inner layer of cytotropoblast where the cell uh, membrane is very clear and each cell is separated and an outer layer called as the syncytiotropoblast where there is cytoplasmic mass which is studded with numerous nucleus. So the changes that occurs in the embryoblast are there will be differentiation of the cells here forming two layers. An upper layer which contains columnar cells forms the epiblast and an inner layer which contains cuboidal cells called as the hypoblast or alternatively they are also called as primitive ectoderm and primitive endoderm. So between the two there will be a basement membrane. Gradually the epiblast cells get separated from the cytotropoblast cells and a cavity is formed here which is called as the amniotic cavity and a flat layer of cells derived from the cytotropoblast forms the amnion. So the original blastocele cavity is now called as the primitive yolk sac which is lined on other side by the Husserl's membrane. So the cytotropoblast will start secreting the extra embryonic mesoderm which separates the embryo from the entire tropoblast layer. So within the mesoderm there will be formation of small cavities which coalesces to form the extra embryonic coelom and the extra embryonic mesoderm is derived, divided into somatopluric layer and splanchnopluric layer. In the bilamina germ disc, some cells of the endoderm or primitive endoderm will differentiate to form columnar cells which strongly bind with the cells of the epiblast layer or primitive ectoderm layer. So this region is called as the precordal plate. So these are the major changes that occurs in second week of the development. So major thing that you should remember is there is formation of bilaminar germ disc and precordal plate and two cavities, the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac. So in the next video, we will see what are the changes that occurs in the third week, how this bilaminar germ disc will get converted into three layered or trilaminar germ disc. We will see in the next embryology tutorials video. So do subscribe for future updates. Thank you.